Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center and it's our favorite time of the week because there's new knives that hit our shelves every day and these are the coolest ones this week. So let's check them out. All right, the big news this week, the first well, about, about two thirds of the, or a third of the knives on the table at least are all made with Magna Cut steel this week, which is pretty cool. And for the uninitiated, the reason Magna Cut is so special and such a coveted steel nowadays is it hits the trifecta of knife steel performance properties in kind of a more balanced and better way than any other steel out there. It has great edge holding. It has very, very good toughness as well. And it is stainless. Um, it's so stainless, in fact, that some companies are using it in their like ultra stain resistant lineups. Uh, so that's cool. And we got some stuff to look at, including the most affordable uh, Magna Cut folding knives you can get your hands on today. Starting at 110 bucks with the Best Tech Swordfish. This is a knife that has appealed to us for a while. We've got an S35 VN exclusive of this actually still in stock right now. Uh, that is uh, about $20 less than this if the 110, if you like to stay under that $100 mark, there's that option for you too. Edge retention shouldn't be too far different between that version and this Magna Cut version, but the Magna Cut, like I said, is going to be tougher and more stain resistant too. Four inch blade on this bad boy, narrow enough and on the blade and the handle that it doesn't take up too much space in the pocket though. It is an easy knife to carry every day because folded up, check that out. Not too big of a thing to uh, kind of schlep, so shall we say. The uh, deep carry pocket the clip there also goes a long way to helping that be nice and easy to carry too. It tucks right out of the way. No one's gonna know you've got a big four inch bladed knife in your pocket until you need to use it. And it's real easy to actuate with the ball bearing flipper there. It looks good with the two tone G10 handles. This one uh, has the green G10 for the uh, main section of the handle. There's also a, a coyote tan version right now with the black uh, G10 bolsters, of course. Liner lock on these, great action. Feels good in the hand, nimble enough, especially for a four inch blade. That's a very cool thing indeed. For about five bucks more, uh, which is kind of funny to think of considering it's a bit smaller, <laughs> you've got the uh, Strelit, an O-Stop Hell design. And yeah, this blade's probably a little bit more tricky to, uh, to grind than the, uh, the four inch blade on that bigger knife, but you've got that Magna Cut steel here uh, just over Actually, sharpened edge is probably, yeah, it's just over two inches, maybe less than two inches, but not a, uh, we should have the amount of cutting edge on here, right? We usually have that on our specs. 1.3 inches for the cutting edge. Very, very acute tip, and that's where the toughness of Magna Cut is gonna pay really nice dividends. Less worry about that chipping or snapping off under a heavy strike. And really, this is a folding push dagger, so the possibility of using it in a striking type of fashion is not a zero, shall we say. We've got a two-tone finish on the blade, black and satin. There's an old satin version also available right now, both of those with that black G10 and a single-sided pocket clip. Yeah, single-sided, I was almost thought it could be uh, moved there for a minute. The only kind of tricky part with this knife is uh, unlocking and closing it because the blade is right there. You just have to get used to it. And then you can open it two different ways. You can front flip it or conventional flip it with the back thing. You got that nice hook for opening packages and that sort of thing, or whatever else you might need to open. Next up, if you like an American made knife uh, with Magna Cut steel, uh, these two knives are more expensive than the ones we just looked at, but for what you're getting, they're actually pretty capably priced, I would say. And that is the American Blade Works Model 1 V6. We've got two versions, a drop point and this Warncliffe style blade right here. U.S. made with Magna Cut Steel for 199 bucks right now on the dot. We've got several handle versions available, uh, G10s and Micartas mostly. There's an Ultim version as well. You got the orange G10 on this drop point version right here and the black Micarta on this Sheep's or uh, Warncliffe version right here. Blade length itself is about three and a quarter inches long. You've got a high flat grind. Uh, what's that? Yeah, about an eighth of an inch thick on the steel it looks like. Um, yeah, right on according to our spec sheet actually. Hey, my acrometers are calibrated today. What's that say? So it's a good working blade, especially with the, uh, this Warncliffe here. It feels kind of like a heavy workhorse, you know? 
You've got that nice, completely straight edge, less likely to slip out of longer cuts than the drop point at the uh, sacrifice of maybe a little bit of different types of versatility, uh, but great power, great piercing potential with this blade. And really that kind of, you know, every person's tool factor uh, is kind of amped up by the handle here too. It's got this neutral uh, elliptical shape, meaning even big hands are gonna be able to use this no problem, which is pretty cool. We've got an inset liner lock, as you can see right there. The backspacer, I believe, is titanium. And then we do have a milled titanium pocket clip, reversible, left or right sided. Now we've got ball bearings in the pivot of this knife. Let's check out the opening action. Nice and crisp, crisp, great sound. No thumb studs to get in the way of the cutting path. Edge itself coming as far back as it can before it hits that plunge grind right there. Just everything right. Nothing super fancy, but everything done exceptionally well. Exactly what you want in a hard working tool. If you want your uh, American made magnet cut knife to be a bit more premium, however, the Hogue Misto is finally here. Now they initially introduced this knife like this, in this fashion with the Tonto blade uh, back at Blade Show. And this is running uh, about 350 bucks. And at SHOT Show just last week, they showed us the new drop point version, which because this is running with a stonewash blade as opposed to the black coating, you save a little bit of money actually, uh, 20 bucks, 330 for this knife right here. They do have titanium handles with this intricate swirled pattern going on. And although it's only a 3.4 inch blade, it has kind of the same or similar characteristics to that swordfish we looked at earlier in that you've got a decent amount of length, but it's nice and narrow, very easy to incorporate into your everyday carry needs because again, nice and slim when it's folded up as well. Unlike the knives we've looked at so far, however, this is a completely ambidextrous knife for right or left-handed use. The experience is gonna be exactly the same. You've got at the heart of that, Hogue's Able Lock. Their version of the crossbar lock is about as smooth as it gets in my opinion. Uh, there are ball bearing versions of crossbar locks out there that have a different feel, but this uh, is not dealing with ball bearings. This is with uh, simple uh, phosphor bronze washers. So it has a silkier feel. Uh, there's, there's a certain smoothness that imparts that's different from kind of that, that friction free uh, feeling of ball bearings, which if you know what, I, if you've experienced enough of both of them, you'll know what I'm talking about there and you know why that makes sense. Even though as I'm, I'm saying it out here, I don't know if that quite communicates the difference to, uh, to those of you who don't know what I'm talking about. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's utterly smooth, silky, just excellent. And of course, because it's a crossbar lock, you do have left and right handed use. Getting back to my original point there. Uh, the thumb studs back up that ambidextrous quality, as does the deep carry pocket clip, which is fully reversible. As far as the cutting geometry on this knife, it maybe is a slightly bit less efficient than something like Hogue's Deca, uh, and that's probably down to the height of the grind here with the similar blade stock. Not aggressive, or, or not drastically different. This is still going to be a nice everyday slicer, but something to be thinking about at the very least. And then on the Tonto version, we're dealing with a saber height hollow grind on the straight section and a flat grind after the transition to the Tonto tip. So thinner behind the edge a little bit on the Tonto version, uh, as long as you don't need that ultimate big long slicing capability, this might be a little bit of a better cutter for you than the drop point. It all depends on your needs. This one, just as smooth, just as easy to incorporate thanks to that closed profile, just very. Very nice. Last thing I didn't mention, of course, uh, being a crossbar lock, you've got finger safe action, which is what we say simply to mean that as you close the knife, your fingers never cross the path of the blade. That's just a nice thing to have. Is it 100% necessary? No, I've never cut myself on a liner lock before, but it could happen. This is uh, just a little bit of added degree of safety, and we're gonna move away from MagnaCut now, but we do have more uh, finger safe stuff to take a look at. Starting with some more Hogue made knives. These are for their partnership with HK and it's the Ballista XL. Larger version of the original Ballista Auto which was a push button auto. This version is a crossbar locking auto or an able lock auto as they call it. 
uh, $243. Uh, for these right here, or sorry, for the drop point version, which comes plain edged, uh, 252 for the combo edged Tonto. There's a little more work going into the, uh, the edge on that one. Both of them come with S30V blades, three and three quarters of an inch long. And this leans a little more towards like the beefy side of things, at least the feel in the hand does compared to something like the swordfish that we talked about earlier. The blade geometry, however, is kept nice and slim, nice and efficient high flat grind on both of these. Uh, it's not a hollow ground section on the Tonto here. And of course you've got the, uh, the swedge to relieve a little bit of drag from the top. And you've got G10 handles here and that's what gives it its you know, robust feeling in the hand due to the thickness on top of the liners of this knife. Got great amount of space there at the back. Bigger hands are gonna be able to come back off to the uh, edge right here, no problem. And if you really wanted to, you've got that choil area to choke up on for finer control, but the uh, edge does come all the way through it. So be careful when you do that type of hold. We've got the louvered pocket clip here, which is pretty much completely deep carry and reversible. And these louvers are really nice to give you a little extra traction to help get it out of your pocket. Sometimes deep carry pocket clips can have a knife so far down that it can be a little bit trickier to get to them than if it were riding a little bit higher. So this counteracts that a little bit, which is nice. Now onto the mechanism. We do have a spine mounted safety here, which is gonna work in the open and the closed position. And that's just gonna prevent that lock bar from moving. So when it's open, you can't pull the lock bar back and close the blade. And since firing the blade, all you have to do is pull that lock bar back. It's gonna keep the blade from firing when you don't want it to. Very, very cool. Uh, how about a more budget friendly knife? This is our budget, budgetiest knife so far on the table, coming in at about $65. A new version of the Kershaw Iridium crossbar lock that they call the Duralock with the reverse Tonto blade that is new for this year. 3.4 inches, D2 steel, stone washed finish. Great combination of working materials right there. Black aluminum handles and uh, plain silver style aluminum for the backspacer there. Getting a little bit more of a stark look to it than the uh, dark gray and uh, brass coloration of the drop point version. Still maintains everything else though about that original version that made it so successful. You've got deep carry pocket clip, well, almost deep carry. It is reversible, nice use of flush head screws and an inset pocket for the clip to sit in. So it's very easy to put back in your pocket without snagging on, on anything and great action. This is a ball bearing based crossbar lock flipper or not flipper folder. And it does have a different feel than you would get from a washer based system. It's almost like you feel the motion of a washer based system. You feel that smoothness throughout this one. You just almost don't feel it's almost just a free floating thing. You feel a little bit of like the actual tang of the knife rotating around the pivot, but that's about it. It's pretty cool. Feels good in the hand, not too uh, bulky in the pocket either. Not super slim, but certainly very easy. Very cool to see this joining the lineup for sure. So Kaiser has also been on a roll with their crossbar locks, which they call the clutch lock. And the difference that they do that uh, other manufacturers haven't done so far is when you have a uh, crossbar lock, it's typically using an Omega spring anchored one around the crossbar and the other anchored in the handle somehow. Well, in this one, it's anchored to the liners and they've got a series of holes that means you can adjust the uh, tension of that Omega spring, depending on which hole you put it in. Now, I can't say exactly how much of a difference each step makes. This one has three steps because every single Kaiser with a crossbar lock that I've pulled out of the box or taken home to own for myself has been great right out of the box. So I've never felt the need to tweak it. Uh, if you have one of these and have tweaked it, let me know in the comments, how, how did that uh, experience go for you? I'm genuinely curious. But anyway, this sheepdog has that system. And it's cool to see the sheepdog continuing to evolve. Uh, this knife and the Gemini within Kaiser's lineup, I think really kicked down the door uh, for the brand, really put them on the map and really kicked down the door for folks like, you know, we and Civivi, Artisan Cutlery, Best Tech, uh, and those folks to kind of jump in uh, because Kaiser did it so well uh, first, basically. This is one of those designs. It is different though, this one from the earlier ones. First of all, biggest difference, 
no big flipper tab uh, from those original models. They've been deleting the flipper tab on several new versions. As such, it's a little bit of a cleaner profile. You can get closer to surfaces when you're cutting and you can choke up on it a little better too. And then of course, the crossbar lock is the other main difference here along with you know the thumb stud and uh, opening hole as well. So you can do other stuff like that reverse flick. Blade here is uh, about 3.15 inches long, S35VN steel. Not super thick, however. This is still something that can cut. This is not just a big, you know, doorstop of a blade. It's still an actual blade that will actually cut. And the handles here with the Nebula fat carbon scales or a flat fat carbon material look great, feel good as well. No contouring on this one, uh, just rolled uh, edges, flat scales otherwise, but you do have the signature milled lines in it. Pretty darn cool knife. Uh, I should say price on that, about $189. Uh, this next one is a C note less, however. This is the uh, Mikey Carlson designed Sub 3 OBK for 89 bucks. Uh, 2.95 inch blade, 154 cm, black aluminum handles, and that clutch lock with five hole positions to choose from here really nice. So it flips really well. The blade, great versatile drop point, nice and thin with a high flat grind, nice matte texture to the aluminum there. It's not slick or slippery. Deep carry pocket clip, not reversible, unfortunately. Uh, kind of a shame to see that sometimes with an otherwise uh, fully ambidextrous design. It's an interesting proposition here. Like specs wise, it reads similarly to something like the Kaiser Drop Bear, uh, which is what, $120, I, th I think. Um, so it's a whole $30 more, and it's got about the same blade length and same handle materials. This one, however, does feel smaller than the, uh, than the drop bear, despite having the same, roughly the same on paper measurements. Yeah, you can still get a full grip on it. You can still choke up there and have that. It you know, chokes back maybe a little better, and as a consequence, feels a little smaller in the hand. Not sure quite why. Um, it is such a stark difference without holding them side by side. But if you uh, take that take that out of the equation, you've got the same amount of sharpened edge with the same steel for 30 bucks less from the same company. It's kind of interesting. Nice way to save a bit of money there in any case. One more, no, two, well, two more finger safe uh, knives to take a look at. And the first is this OTF. OTFs are finger safe, right? Absolutely. Uh, this is a Microtech Clone Trooper Ultratech, $408, decked out with that Star Wars Clone Trooper livery, white with blue accents, and of course, the nice symbol there right on the front side, as well as on the pocket clip there at the back. Like the swordfish, <laughs> everything's going back to the swordfish there at the beginning. Very narrow in the pocket due to its uh, slim OTF nature. The Ultratech is kind of their full size friendly OTF design or friendly EDC OTF design, I would say. Uh, even if the uh, double edged blade here isn't quite an EDC staple uh, in terms of, the terms of things you would look at, but three, three, about three and a half inches of blade length, which means about seven inches of sharpened edge. So you got a lot of edge to wear out here before you have to worry about resharpening. Very cool. Always love to see their uh, special edition models like this one. And it's just one of many new Microtechs that hit the site every week. So make sure to check out our selection below at the link. Click. Uh, and one more finger safe lock now. The limited edition of the Cold Steel Mayhem is here. Finally, here we go. 200 and, or sorry, 300 bucks for this. You got a six inch S35 VN blade. You've got G10 handles and their Atlas lock, which uh, looks kind of like a lock back, but you actually pull back on it. And it's got a fork that essentially interfaces with these two pins right here uh, in conjunction with the tang of the blade to lock everything up super solid. And you get to do stuff like this, which on a big old six inch blade is borderline frightening, <laughs> but that's okay. Cause you can do that as well. And that's borderline frightening for other people too. Big old handle two and well, that's about a seven finger grip for my hand. In any case, if you have smaller hands, you might be able to get all eight fingers on it. Balances out surprisingly decently when held up here with a single hand. Like that is actually astonishing. I was not expecting that. So that's kind of cool. And of course you could choke up as well, get closer behind that edge to work it a bit harder. 
but really this is all about reach. Between that six inch blade, it's another three or four inches right there, you've got close to 10 inches of reach in front of your uh, leading edge of your hand. So that is not something to be trifled with. Uh, standard versions of this knife uh, are about $240. Uh, those come with an Aus 10 blade, uh, so you're not going to get quite the same amount of edge retention as you will with the S35 right here. But like I said, this is limited, and I believe this is actually a serial number there right on the front. So don't sleep on this one if you want the upgraded blade steel on this design. So that's a big old folder with Attitude. Let's take a look at a big old fixed blade with Attitude. TM Hunt Trade Waters. Just got a nice sized batch of these in. Kind of a big full sized drop point belt knife in the TM Hunt lineup. Great for a survival knife, great for just any kind of outdoor use where you might need a slightly bigger knife. Almost six inches in length, five and three quarters. Comes with 01 tool steel, heat treated expertly by Todd. He seems to get a ton of performance, more than uh, other folks do out of the 01. Uh, I've used one of his M18s quite extensively with the steel. And man, that stuff just holds up to abuse. And that's gonna be the same thing with this steel as well. You got the full flat grind on eh, it's 3 16 of an inch thick blade steel, nice distal taper though. So you're not dealing with that same thickness all the way out. You maintain some slicing efficiency there and nice angled plunge grind like he likes to do. And his handles are always so, so nice. Like I said, each one's a little bit different. Uh, each one of these, we only have, I think one of, actually I don't know if that's true. We might have like one or two of some, uh, but this version right here, we're dealing with a black wood handle with a curly maple inlay, micarta pins, and is this micarta liners? Or are those wood liners? Actually, I'm not sure. That might be a wood liner. Well, it looks really good in any case. And as you can see from the shape right here, it fits the hand super, super well also. This particular one comes in at about 375 for handmade quality. That's not too bad at all. And they come with this excellent, robust stitched leather sheath, also made by Todd himself. Nice, complete package, ready to see you through your next outdoors adventure. Next, we have a work tough, the Kitsune L, uh, coming in about $149 with a five inch and 690 blade. And despite it being five inches long, it's actually a fairly compact knife overall. I mean, check out that handle right there, G10, skeletonized with orange liners. And I can still get a four finger grip on this knife if I kind of choke up on it, but just. So that keeps things nice and minimal and allows you to take more blade with you, so to speak. Whether you're using this in a, you know, a hiking scenario, this is not necessarily an ultralight knife, but it is pretty robust. You've got 3 16th of a thick, inch thick steel. That made sense. Um, so you've got a ton of strength in this compact design and you're maximizing the amount of edge you can actually use in that. Saber height flat grind there, um, so it's not a pure scalpel. This is really, if you're looking for kind of like compact survival knife stuff, this wouldn't be a bad option. Would also be a pretty decent hunting style knife, I would say, because you've got, again, a decent amount of edge, but a whole package that's not gonna be too bulky on your hip or inside the cavity of your, uh, your latest uh, catch. And the G10 here should be easy to rinse down as well and removes a little bit of weight because of that cutout there. So again, those two, uh, two avenues I would say are, are some pretty decent use cases for this knife. The clip point blade shape is going to work pretty well for both of those things. And you've got Work Tough's excellent, excellent edge finishing here. Convexed and nearly a mirror polish. Like it's always, always impressive to look at their factory edges. Well, well done indeed. Comes with a Kydex sheath, and that sheath does come with this dots style attachment right here, which clips on. It's got that tech lock hole spacing, but only two rows instead of uh, the full square. So it's kind of two thirds of a tech lock right there. And in conjunction with the hole spacing on the Kydex, you'll be able to mount this for either uh, vertical or horizontal carry still, which is quite nice. And just like the knives, their Kydex is super well done also. All right, next up, a couple more folders. Uh, let's go with the newest Jack Wolf. This actually dropped uh, last week while we were at SHOT Show, newest versions of their Sharpshooter Jack. Slip joint knife done exceptionally well. 
modern construction, modern uh, materials, modern techniques, but traditional inspired patterns is what you get with pretty much every Jack Wolf release. And this is no exception. 300 bucks uh, for all of the versions, uh, just under three inch blade of S90 V steel. So you've got a ton of edge retention here combined with the full height hollow grind and the very narrow, very sharp edge. This thing is going to cut like a dream, just effortless type of cutting. Of the materials, I really like this one right here. It's one of the more subtle things. Instead of an inlay, you, we've got full titanium instead with jigged patterned milling going on. I like that a lot. Screw together construction as opposed to classic pinned construction that most slip joints come with. So it is technically adjustable and nice. The way this thing talks is just so, so good. Man, feels great. No, no real worry about it uh, coming uh, about the knife closing while you're using it too much, thanks to that uh, high degree of pressure that you saw me. I mean, it takes a lot to get that blade to move when you don't want it to. Very, very nice. And of course, we have to talk about the packaging. How could we not? Aluminum tube with custom art for each new release. Unscrews, you've got the collectible cardboard disc, the pog right there pocket slip, stickers, microfiber cloths, the whole nine yards. And then all this comes in a nice uh, black presentation box as well. For the collectors out there, that really means something. And it's really cool to see them not just phoning it in on packaging. It's pretty cool. Next up, uh, Alliance Designs. I believe this is their first, no, this is not their first collaboration with Ray Laconico. They did a version of the Gemini, called it something else. Um, unless I'm really messing up my, uh, my memory banks here. Uh, but this is the easy 2.0 flipper. Uh, this one is the less expensive version of what we've got in right now. Uh, or actually it's the middle one. They start at 500 bucks for uh, titanium uh, tops out at uh, $695 uh, for version with uh, dark tie milled inlays. Uh, both of those come with an LMAX steel blade, but this version right here with a Adama steel blade comes in at 550 bucks. As you can see, that comes with a carbon fiber inlay and dark tie pivot collars and pocket clip right there. And then from the spine, as you can see, integral construction, which is very nice. Creates a nice clean look from the spine and that really complements the nice clean profile of this knife overall. So I actually misspoke just a moment ago when I said this was a Damascus steel blade. This is actually a Damascus clad blade. I'm not actually sure what the uh, core material is here, uh, but given you know Alliance Designs' pedigree and the price of this, I'm sure it's still a high performance material. Uh, I'm sorry, I just don't have the, uh, the actual material here in front of me, so I apologize for that. But it's three and a quarter inches long with that Tonto profile, hollow ground at the base and flat ground at the tip, frame lock, to go along with the integral construction and check out that nice clean profile from the closed position too. That's super nice. Shall we flip it? Flip away. It flips. It flips very well. Have no fear. Very cool. Check them out. And last but not least, if you want kind of a, uh, a fraction of the style, like the premium vibes and styling of that knife, uh, but you can't afford the price, we do have one thing here that might be uh, acceptable to you. Uh, another Kaiser, we're going back to Kaiser for one more thing. Uh, this is the Gavel, comes in at just $82. Uh, sub three inch blade, 154 CM steel, and the handles with the brass bolsters and uh, burlap micarta inlays on the back, just look great. Very cool kind of custom knife vibes, but certainly not a custom knife price. You will have to be uh, real conscious of this flipper tab, however, check out how small that is you gotta it's not necessarily hard to use but you have to concentrate a little bit to make sure you're using it right it can be easy to just kind of run right over that if you if you're not kind of going yeah see even there that time it took a, it took a second try so keep that in mind but it does create a nice clean shape no flipper tab sticking out when it's open and still maintains that cleanliness on that closed position as well Blade itself, like I said, three inches long or just under. Uh, Saber height flat grind there. The 154 CM is a solid choice at this price range. Milled titanium pocket clip. It looks more expensive than it is, 
that is for sure. All right, that's all we've got to show you for this week. Let me know what you thought down in the comments and if you want to get your hands on any of these knives, make sure to check out the links in the description that'll take you to knifecenter.com. While you're there, don't forget about our long running knife rewards program that rewards you for buying these knives today. It means you get some free money to spend on a future one. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center and that's Thomas behind the camera and we are signing off. See you next time.